investigation is underway at a New Jersey university into the events that led to the suicide of a freshman. Tyler Clementi committed suicide a short time after images of him having sex with another man were streamed over the Internet. Two students from Rutgers University, one of them Clementi's roommate, have been, uh, been charged with invasion of privacy. And the New Jersey Attorney General now also considering filing hate crime charges. And there are reports the 18-year-old Clementi had complained to university officials about similar harassment by his dorm room mate. Well, let's introduce now Bill Belsley. Uh, Bill Belsley is the president of Bullying.org, the world's most visited and referenced website about bullying, joining us this morning via Skype. Bill, this is a heartbreakingly tragic story. A lot of people might wonder, though, when does a prank reach the level of bullying? Well, I, bullying is typically characterized by a behavior that is repeated and intentional. And it appears in this particular case, from what I know of the story so far, that it, clearly that it falls within that realm. Uh, I think the other layer here is that uh, the young the, the roommate uh, invaded the the other roommate's uh, privacy, uh, then went and made the personal humiliation even worse by, if you will, outing him. Uh, letting people know that his roommate was a homosexual. And I, I think maybe that's one of the key parts of this story is that, um, you know, there's a recent report uh, that just came out and described the fact that uh, a lot of gay, lesbian, transgendered uh, young people who go to the university and college, uh, even today, still feel very, very uh, intimidated and threatened in their universities. And I think this is an eye opener for me. Because in my work with bullying.org, I, I work a lot with younger kids, and we have seen that the research shows that bullying typically falls off more as you get into the high school years, but clearly there's a lot of work yet to be done, uh, even at the university level, no doubt. Has that been facilitated by technology that wasn't uh, available, say, for instance, when, when I was going to school 20 years ago? Oh, absolutely, because, you know, the thing about, uh, in this particular case, if we use this as an example of cyberbullying, when I was coined the term cyberbullying about a decade ago, I described it as the use of information technologies to harm others in a way, again, that is repeated and intentional. And so now, you, you, you know, the, and, and the thing about cyberbullying is uh, people who want to hurt other people can do, a, do it wherever they have access to the Internet. Or in this particular case, it's even more insidious because uh, the roommate left his webcam on and uh, left it live and broadcasting uh, for the world to see. So there was clear intent here, and, and uh, um, it, it, it causes great concern because, you know, as parents, I'm a dad with a, a son who's at university myself, and uh, uh, perhaps a daughter soon as well, and, and you'd like to hope that when kids are away at a university dorm, uh, it's like they're home away from home. You'd like to hope that they were safe and secure, and the only thing they really, uh, um, you know, they, they shouldn't have to worry about such things. Bill, I just want to note to viewers that you're uh, speaking with us uh, this morning from Columbia. How can we tell if our child is being bullied? And another question before I have to let you go. Approach uh, school officials if it's happening in school. Report it to police or call the other kids' parents. What would you do? Well, I, I think uh, in terms of bullying, you really want to read between the lines with your kids because, unfortunately, kids learn at a very young age not to tell adults. And the reason they learn not to tell adults, even though people like me and others you know, say, please do tell us. It's hard to solve these problems by yourself. But kids learn that if they do tell an adult and either a parent overreacts or uh, a teacher doesn't know how to handle it, uh, it does make the situation worse. I will mention, by the way, um, you know, we have our National Bullying Awareness Week coming up in November, and it's clear we have a lot of work to do. And the other area that we have a lot of work to do is if, we, if kids do tell us as teachers, uh, one of the really embarrassing things as a teacher here in Canada is, uh, and I'm here in Columbia, speaking to teachers here, uh, I found that teachers around the world, when they go to university, very, very few of us receive actual research-based courses to help us to prepare us for the classroom so that when we find out that it is happening to one of our students or a parent does come forward and tell us, often teachers get very defensible. It's not because they don't care about kids, but it's often that really we haven't been properly trained. And so that's why I created bullyingcourse.com so that my fellow teachers and parents will know what to do. Uh, it's, it's very unsettling. You want your kid to be safe. And we as teachers have one primary responsibility, and that's to create the optimal environment where our kids can achieve their potential as learners. And the bottom line here is that kids, whether they be young kids in primary school 
or young men and women in university, people who are scared can't learn. They can't they can ever achieve that potential. There's so much to think about this story, and we appreciate your insight into it. Bill Belsey, president of bullying.org, one of the world's foremost websites about bullying, speaking with us via Skype from Columbia. Thanks very much, Bill.